All right. Hey guys. So this is Ruben, and uh, this is our monthly community meeting. Uh, slightly low turnout today, but uh, you know we will continue to do this uh, as long as everyone interested. And of course, uh, we will continue to have this recorded and uploaded on YouTube and stuff like that. So, um, okay, let's quickly just go through the agenda, just making sure everyone can see um, the stream. And of course, like the usual rules, I think we don't need to go through them, just basically common sense. Um, right. And right, so this is the agenda for now, for today's meeting. There's quite a lot to cover and actually quite a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, does anyone have anything to add to this? Uh, of course, there will be a, there will be you know a time for questions and discussion. But if there's anything that you feel that should be on here but isn't, uh, please let us know now. I'll wait for a few seconds. You can type or you can just you know say something in the voice. Okay, great. I don't think there's anything, but uh, you guys can always uh, add in later. So, right, this is the agenda for now. All right, so the first thing is the most important thing, which is the Lelantis reactivation. Uh, so, it actually, um, the tag was actually quite sophisticated. Uh, I posted everything in the forum. Uh, but uh, it looks like we found the issue and we've also found other places to uh, really uh, harden the protocol. And I, we've, we've gone through many, many uh, people, like uh, we went through Sarah, of course, Aram, and went through uh, Chidos uh, and several other cryptographers also for their uh, opinion. Trail of Bits as well also has weighed in. And they are pretty confident that it would be safe to reactivate. So now we are just um, making sure that it all runs on testnet. Uh, hopefully sometime early next week, we can release the binaries and we'll set a one week activation time. Uh, so, you know, there's a whole list of changes that can be viewed on the forum. Uh, and we will be also re-reviewing Lelantis version 2 uh, as well. Um, does anyone have any um, questions on this? This has been like I think it's taken us maybe like three, three more than a month, I guess, uh, to really go through this. Although the in the the initial attack was simple to solve, the cryptography behind the other stuff me was a lot more complex and subtle, and our cryptographers wasn't always in agreement until uh, just very recently. So that was the reason of the delay. Okay, does anyone have any uh, questions on this? We hope to reactivate uh, in one week after the release of the binary. So expect maybe like, you know, 10 days or two weeks or so. Okay, all right. Uh, so, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. We actually were ready to release when that Lelanta stuff happened. So we didn't want to release a wallet, which was private by default with Lelantis, uh with Lelantis disabled. So uh, we were waiting for this. It's more or less ready to go. Um, we have from some minor UI changes, which should be just resolved in the next few days. And hopefully, once uh, Lelantis reactivates, we will be ready to launch this uh, new Electron wallet. Uh, maybe we should give it a new name because people got confused with the Electron wallet. But this is kind of like the rich GUI wallet that we've been working working on for a while. Uh, and it also has coin swap functionality. Now, the coin swap functionality is uh, not decentralized. It is centralized for the moment, but it means that it is, you know, has good liquidity. But there's no KYC, and we don't record any like IP details. Obviously, uh, if you want like further privacy, then maybe this isn't the best way. But this would be a good start to bridge in and out of uh, Fira very easily. Okay. Any questions here? All right, uh, so Elysium, which is our tokenization layer, uh, it has actually went underwent a lot of changes. I just like pasted like some of the things that, that has been happening. 
uh, the the whole thing is actually working. Uh, we're just actually working on some stability stuff and test coverage. It's always the the last mile that is always the hardest. Uh, we were also slowed down uh, by the Lelantis deactivation. But uh, so far, things are moving smoothly. And although it, it can be a bit hard to estimate the exact time, we're thinking about maybe one month or so of work before we can uh, deploy it. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what Elysium is, basically, um, you know, it allows people to create their own tokens on uh, Fero and enjoy the Lantus capability. Um, now, there is a company that is interested in having some sort of asset back token on it. Uh, we're waiting for Elysium release before we, we commit to anything, uh, but there is some interest there. So we'll see how what, what it happens, because this is more of, um, I mean, for now, I wouldn't say it's our main focus, but it's definitely an interesting way to get uh, more adoption of Firo's network as well. <clears throat> Okay. Um, all right. So another thing that we've been working on is the mobile wallet design. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. We went through like many iterations. We even had to throw one out like completely out of the window. Uh, but I'm quite happy with this one. Uh, this has been done by our uh, new Armenian team. Uh, and it's looking pretty sweet. Like it's uh, simple uh, and functional. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, there, uh, the backend work is is going to be a like I wouldn't say it's challenging, but to do it in a privacy preserving way, we're still thinking of how to, the best way to do it. Of course, if we rely on the Electrum infrastructure, we can get that up pretty quickly. But the issue is that of course it relies on a centralized Electrum servers, uh, which that means you have to trust not to record uh, certain details. Obviously, this is not ideal in the long run, but it would be a way to quickly get um, an Electrum wallet with the Lantus support uh, directly in. So we are debating on that. We might just go with the Electrum first because after all, then you'll be kind of uh, relying on our infrastructure, but you can always run your own Electrum server as well. Uh, but eventually we are uh, dedicating uh, some research towards, you know, finding a way to do this in a more privacy-preserving manner. <clears throat> Does anyone have any feedback at the moment? Okay, all right, moving on. All right, this is another thing that we've been working on for quite a while. Um, so in, back in late 2019, we have been actually really looking to change uh, MTP for a while. Uh, and we open a, a sort of forum poll, uh, and I think the general consensus was a favorable of Procpile. And Procpile, I would say, would be like a, one of the, like the latest generation of proof of work algorithms, and it is <clears throat> quite interesting because instead of building an algorithm that is uh, like ASIC resistant or FPGA resistant, it is more about focusing but making the GPU the ASIC by basically catering the algorithm to the hardware. So what it means is that if you do try to build an ASIC for prop power, it starts resembling a GPU, which I think is a very interesting strategy. And of course, there have been some people to say that, well, well you know, why not you stick with MTP? It's unique and stuff like that. Uh, and yes, it is true. And during its time, it was considered groundbreaking. But you know, with the with the speed things moves, uh, it no longer actually serves a good purpose. And I think one of the biggest uh, limitations of MTP is that it has a very, very, very large proof size, which is two hundred kilobytes. Uh, that means it's like even if the block is empty, that block will at least occupy 200 kilobytes. And the other problem is that with every mining share, let's say like you're mining with your GPU, every time you submit a share to the pool, it has to be submitted with the 200 kilobyte proof as well, which actually really, really <clears throat> um, puts a lot of strain both on the pool, um, especially on the pool, and just generates all this like, you know, uh, unnecessary bloat. And when you compare this to Procpile's approved, which is kind of like 64 bytes. 
So this is like, you know, like 1,000, uh, so much, so much smaller, right? This is 200 kilobytes versus 64 bytes. And what that will allow means that the our blockchain can be a lot more compact. You know, it doesn't keep on uh, growing and growing and growing the blockchain size, as you probably have known. Uh, and of course, we'll be mainly using the 0 0.9.4 parameters. Uh, but we do probably want uh, the prop power period to change every block or so. The other sort of um, thing that prop power will change between MTP and and uh, and prop power is that right now MTP is very very favorable to Nvidia, not really by design, but because Nvidia's um, GPUs tend to have a much more powerful compute. Uh, that means their computational power is generally more powerful than AMD. While AMD, if I'm not mistaken, used to have like very fast memory. Well, the 0 0.9.4 parameters kind of uh, builds more parity between AMD and NVIDIA so that, uh, you know, we are getting minus from both sides of the GPU size. Now, another thing that we are considering, which hasn't been finalized, is what should the minimum memory requirement of uh, PropPow is. This is actually configurable, uh, and currently MTP only allows GPUs that are larger than four gigabytes. So any of the low-end GPUs are totally uh, wiped out. Uh, so of course, if we want to include all sorts of GPUs, including like outdated ones, uh, then a 3.5 gigabyte uh, requirement would be probably good. And that would mean that you have most uh, inclusion, uh, you know, of, of all kinds of GPU types. But if we were to restrict to more recent GPUs, then we may want to increase this to, you know, four or five or six uh, gigabytes or so. Um, now, the idea of having this DAC size start at 3.5 and you would actually slowly increase as the block size increases. Uh, so like maybe like we'll follow like, like how Ethereum does it where it increases like 8 megabytes every, every like, you know, few days or so. Uh, so that as time passes, the, the DAC does get larger and larger and larger. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we appreciate any sort of feedback from this. Like, should we be including uh, crappier, like, you know, lower end miners, uh, which may have only four gigabytes of RAM? Uh, or should we be saying like, okay, you know, we are excluding that and we want to keep uh, basically more uh, newer, newer graphics cards. And there's pros and cons to both because the problem with allowing very, very cheap GPUs is that often there will be, um, like especially you have all these old RX 480s, uh, which had like four gigabytes of RAM, uh, which were mining Ethereum, but because of the, the current state of Ethereum's DAC size, it no longer works for Ethereum. Suddenly you have this glut of all these cheap GPUs that will be trying to mine your coin. I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, yes, it does allow uh, people who don't have like the most fancy graphics card to minus, but it also allows people to to buy all these cheap like second, third hand graphics cards and just build huge farms out of it. So uh, we're definitely open to feedback. You know, uh, I'm personally am okay either way. We can be more inclusive and 3.5 gigabytes, or we want to kind of uh, maintain the status quo and keep it above uh, 4 gigabytes. So if anyone has any uh, feedback there or needs any um, clarification of what I'm talking about, uh, yeah, you're willing, you can uh, chime up. So right now, we actually originally had someone that was developing, helping to develop this, but halfway through, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an external developer and they just bailed on us. Uh, but uh, we are looking for uh, alternatives. So we've been in talks with uh, several others as well. Uh, someone said that he'll be able to do it. Um, I'm having my fingers crossed. Uh, but you know, if you know anyone that is experienced in dealing dealing with this, uh, we are definitely looking for them. Oh, hopefully, this other person, uh, you know, delivers. Uh, but you know, as uh, when you're dealing with external developers, uh, 
it is always a challenge uh, with reliability. Now, of course, you know, people say, well, why don't you do it in-house? Of course we can do it in-house. Uh, and that shouldn't take too much time, but because we have been just so focused on our current roadmap items that we, that probably we are the only ones that can do it well, uh, it makes more sense to dedicate our internal development to what we're really good at, and that would take outside developers a lot of time to do, versus you know dealing with something like Proc Power, which has already been deployed in other projects already. So it makes more sense to outsource that. It's a one-off task, uh, and yeah, we we don't have to consume internal resources on that. The other good thing about uh, our PropPow implementation is that because PropPow is used in several other coins, uh, we don't have to like come up with new miners, uh, new mining software. We can use the existing one, maybe with some very, very minor tweaks uh, to fit the parameters that we are using, which to me is a good thing. I don't think we should be different just for the sake of being different. I think PropPow has proven itself and from all the coins that I spoke to, they were using PropPower, they're pretty happy with the results so far. We are also going to be uh, doing a research uh, on what, what is the current state of uh, MTP on Firo. Like, if, is there FPGAs out there? Uh, that would be interesting to know. I don't think it would change the decision, but uh, it would just be interesting to just know on, on the on on a like a informal basis and there is a research group called nonsense nonsense labs uh that is currently looking at it and they're doing it pro bono uh because they just find this really interesting uh i will put the link later uh with with them all right any questions on this okay good note that you can always just Unmute your mic and talk, or you can just post a channel, uh, post post a question in the channel, and we will uh, see it and respond to you. Okay, so we have the Hummingbot campaign, which is basically a liquidity campaign, and basically what it means is that um, you know instead of hiring a market maker, we are incentivizing community members to provide liquidity for Firo. So let's say you know there are two. Uh, two campaigns are running on the Firo and Bitcoin and Firo and US dollar USDT. So that means if you run a bot and you provide liquidity using Firo and USDT, uh, you can earn some sweet rewards. As you can see, the yield is quite interesting, uh, especially. But note that the yield uh, also, I don't think it takes into account like the loss if you um, move between, like let's say if Firo goes up, uh, but you know, you sell a lot of Firo and you end up with Bitcoin. Uh, I think it doesn't factor into account that. But um, yeah, I mean, this are this is a good way to earn some side money. Uh, you don't have to have a well, you have to have a little bit of expertise. But everyone can just spin up uh, a, a bot and you know connect it to their Binance API keys and provide liquidity. And there's actually, I think, more than a hundred unique i think there's even more maybe even 200 unique people providing liquidity uh on binance and so far the the i, I would say it's a very good response and we'll probably continue uh doing this we'll, we'll take a look at that so uh we will post uh details if anyone just wants to get in on how to provide liquidity and get some rewards which are paid in Firo. Okay, uh, next question. So the other thing that we have been seeing is that uh, like, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding of what stake Firo is. And stake Firo isn't exactly native Firo. Like if those of you who are familiar with like wrapped, uh, wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum and stuff like that, it's basically a representative token of Firo on Ethereum. But the, the good thing about it is that because instead of just being backed by Firo, it is actually backed by Firo in masternodes, you actually automatically uh, accrue masternode rewards even if you don't have 1,000 Firo. Um, now, currently, we have moved our liquidity to SushiSwap. And SushiSwap um, it was previously on Uniswap. And the reason for that is that it, 
it seems that there's a sushi swap has an onsen program which rewards people for providing liquidity uh on sushi swap and we are hopefully going to get on this onsen uh, incentive so that means if you provide lp or liquidity provisions on sushi swap with st firo uh you will get uh, i think sushi tokens or something like that so that'll be a fun way to get used and you can still continue to earn your mercenary reward so it's like double win right you earn actually triple win you earn the mercenary rewards you earn the um you earn the fees uh, from people swapping on sushi swap and you also uh earn the additional incentives uh, from the onsen which happens as well so um you don't have to do kyc to get st Firo because you can just get it off sushi swap and i would recommend it for people who let's say that you know they don't they they not so they don't really care about Firo as a privacy coin they just want to earn the rewards this is a great way to get in and hopefully we'll be integrated with more uh platforms uh as uh you know there's more interest in stake Firo. But we are very interested to know that if you aren't using Stake Firo and you're like aware of what it is, it, you know, if you're not using it, why? Uh, you know, we would be interested to know. Uh, but you know, think of it as this is just like another way to have a master node. You're not gonna get privacy, but it will allow you to participate in the larger uh, fear, uh, DeFi ecosystem. And this is actually like we are the first, uh, we were the first uh, coin to have this type of support where you can both earn uh, master node rewards while having a wrap token. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay, and another thing that was kind of a surprise to us is that Binance have kind of integrated us on Binance Smart Chain without informing us uh and i just like gave it a shot today uh and it works uh so so binance has its own kind of like ethereum clone called binance smart chain and the whole idea of binance smart chain is to be able to do anything that ethereum can except this is going to be a lot cheaper uh because uh they're not proof of work their consensus system is a lot more centralized is kind of like proof of stakey if i'm not mistaken is some sort of depos system i think or, or is it like tendermint or something like that i think it's tendermint right and what that means is that uh er, any sort of action on binance smart chain is a lot cheaper than ethereum and has all the same functionality as ethereum you can use metamask you can use all the existing ecosystem as well of course some people don't like it, but for some things, it is actually really useful, especially with the uh, the crazy costs of, of fees that people are paying on Ethereum right now. Uh, now, the good thing about it is that what that means is that we can bridge, like unlike ST Firo, which is a bit troublesome to move from ST Firo to Firo because you have to go back to Stakehound and do KYC and have a delay. Binance has this integrated directly into the exchange. So if you see, if you go to withdraw, you can actually withdraw directly uh, into BSC or in its native form, Firo, and you will have a representative token of Firo on Binance Smart Chain. I think this is really exciting. Uh, we're trying to contact Binance uh, as to, you know, <laughs> what their thoughts on this because they didn't inform us. And there is, oh, I think, 700,000 Firo already on this system that is backed by Firo. So that's quite a significant amount. I have no idea who's it, who's it is, uh, but it's interesting to note nevertheless that this was done kind of unilaterally from their side. So I think that's quite cool. Of course, it's not totally decentralized, but uh, it's very interesting as well. Okay. Um, all right, let me see. Torfrey. Torfrit has a question in regards to the prop power switch. Let me just go back to the prop power. Now that miners are less important in terms of security of the network because of chain locks, correct? It would make sense from an energy efficiency perspective to make the memory for GPUs as high as possible. Mm. I don't think it has actually any impact on an energy efficiency 
then point i mean i know what you're saying that the newer graphics card should be more hash per watt um it's actually more equitable to allow like i mean like it depends how you view equitable right because are you saying that only people with mid-range to high-range cards uh can mine Fero, right that means you need like like your your uh, one zero five zero, your two zero five zero, uh, would or even I think three zero five zeros would not be able to mine Fero, but you will need something like a three zero six zero, two zero six zero, one zero six zero at the very minimum, uh, to mine Fero, and I don't know. I mean, is that good or bad? I'm not sure. Um. Uh, yeah, there are a few high range cards there, but if fewer people mine, it also kind of defeats the point of distribution of the of the coin. We want it to be accessible, right? If we say like, oh yeah, we only need a few people to to uh, mine our coin, then the most energy efficient way is just to use ASICs. Uh, that that is the the argument there. Um, so I don't. I mean, personally, I don't think we should be concerned about electricity. Right now, the way uh, Firo is doesn't really consume a lot, but um, I think it's more of like who is our target market, right? Are we going to exclude those people who have 1050s or something or RX 580 uh, with a 4 gigabyte RAM, or do we want to include them? And including them has other implications as to allowing uh, all these like secondhand mining uh, farms, as you said. Uh, to minus so yeah but i mean i think i will probably you know this 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 would be better addressed in the forum but uh this is my point of view i don't have a particular like yes or no uh but yeah i mean i just wanted to set the the record straight yeah okay um all right, so uh, moving on. I mean, later we can discuss this again. But uh, we have also started a weekly sort of update uh, called the Fear of Frontier, which is kind of uh, being hosted by Spline Apple. I thought it would be good that it's not just me uh, <laughs> doing updates um, and, you know, kind of more having more people involved in this. Uh, it also takes some load off me. Um, you know, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know just go to Firo.org there. And, um, you know, the idea of the Firo Frontier is to give weekly updates of what we're doing, of our tech. And, you know, it's not always going to be news. It could be some education, like understanding certain parts of the thing. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a good effort. Um, but you know, we would appreciate feedback. You know, what would you like to see? Uh, is there anything you, that you think that we can make better? Um, uh, and yeah, I think that's you know, it would be good to hear feedback as to what you think about Fear of Frontier. Is there anything else uh, that you would change about it? Is it accessible enough? So, yeah, let us know. Uh, I think we're on episode three, I think episode four will be being will be posted soon. And I believe episode four will be talking about Procpal. Okay. Does anyone want to give some feedback? Or have you not watched when, it? Can uh, Firo get in top 10 uh, private coins, sir? <laughs> how, how, do I, how would I know that? <laughs> I think in terms of technology, we are definitely even top five or top three or even top two. But... Uh, you talk about market cap, there's a lot more to do than, than just pure technical uh, development. Of... Yeah. Thank you, sir. Right. So, okay, the, the Renfiro front, that is kind of unfortunate. I'll leave that to the end of the miscellaneous bit, unless you have to go now. Uh, but I, we will deal with that later. Okay, so... Um, I'm actually very excited to to announce something, but I think we'll only confirm it uh, in the mid of April. Uh, and we, if it pans out, we will have a very strong addition to our research team. We're talking like a world class addition. Uh, it looks to be more or less uh, confirmed, but 
I don't count my chickens until they hatch because always everyone will crap on me. But I'm very, very, uh, very, very interested, uh, very excited uh, that this is happening and hopefully it will pan out and we should know by the 12th of April. Uh, but this is just sort of like a run through of some of our research goals. These are more like near term, um, near to mid term research goals. And although a lot of it is spent in improving the Lantus and stuff like that, we are also, uh, you know, thinking further ahead about like, you know, what are we will really be using in three to four years time, right? Um, so, you know, I hope this shows that we have dedication to what we are doing. You know, we are not just planning for the next, uh, you know, pump or, or uh, doing like, you know, development for the sake of development. Uh, so, yeah, I probably deal with this another time because this is, this would take like a whole day to just run through all this stuff. But here it is, you know, I think if anyone has any comments, they can bring it up uh, in in the forum and note that, you know, target date of completion is all indicative. Research is not like, oh yeah, you know, I can take exactly one month and I'll know what the answer is. Research is by its very nature a bit more open-ended, uh, but, you know, these are just some estimates and, and stuff like that. And it also just sets, uh, you know, the direction of how, how you think, uh, the project is uh, going and you can see there is a commitment to moving towards uh, mandatory privacy and things like that okay uh so some other miscellaneous stuff uh the bip 47 of wrap addresses is tidying up finally we do have some test binaries that we're working on uh and what that will allow is receiver address privacy which is quite cool it's kind of like stealth addressing but Kind of a bit better in other in some ways. Uh, you know, we are working on the new Electrum uh, Fira wallet, which is the Light wallet. Uh, I think we're just finalizing a few cosmetic improvements there. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can see on the right that's just one of the screenshots of Electrum. Uh, we're also working on the rebrand of the Z Note too. I mean, it currently works. It's just called Z Note instead of like Master Note or stuff like that. Um, low priority, but yeah, you know, I think it's a relatively quick fix on that. We're also working on a Explorer update to make sure that it's uh, updated to the latest insight. Hopefully, it'll be a lot more stable than the current block, block Explorer. That's also a small thing. Now, uh, okay, so as Yemoja asked, like, what has happened to Ren Firo? Now, Ren, Ren was initially last year. They were like saying, oh, yeah, you know, we we'll get you integrated in October. Um, and you just need to do the, the dev work and we'll get you in. Uh, and then somehow they said, okay, um, you know, we are too busy, maybe Q1. Now they have changed their requirements and are requiring um, liquidity incentives. That means that they want projects to come up with money. Uh, to incentivize liquidity of uh, of the like let's say Renfiro or so, uh, and the minimum amount is fifty thousand US dollars, which is something that we can provide. But this is the minimum. There are projects like you know with VC money that they can throw like you know one million dollars or so on it. Um, so I don't know how fast uh, our priority would be here. Now on the other end, like you know with with changes, I don't know. You know, I'm I don't have my hopes up for for Renfiro, although it's on our roadmap, and it's kind of disappointing that they change their uh change change kind of like midway on that, especially when we had dedicated time to doing this. So we are looking at alternatives uh such as like Torchain, which has some huge benefits over Ren uh purely because. Ren is more of like wrapping your token and you have to kind of have the Firo being stored uh, by the uh, like uh, decentralized custodians or whatever, right? That means it's not actually Firo is like, like a token that's backed, like a wrapped version of Firo, right? So Ren Firo isn't actually Firo, it's like backed by Firo. 
while Tor Chain allows swaps between chains in its native format. So there, there's no wrapping process as well. Uh, I had some conversations with Kai, of course, this is very preliminary, uh, and they are also pushing to uh, you know, uh, come out with their first release in the next few weeks. And then after that, uh, you know, we will be having a, 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 like a more in-depth meeting with our developers uh, to talk about um, you know, how we can integrate into the Tor chain system. And uh, they are uh, much more receptive and I think it makes more sense to have a native swap uh, rather than a wrapped swap. We aren't closing the Ren hopes uh, completely, but you know we're being realistic here, right? If everyone else is throwing a lot more money on it, uh, we may not be able to compete there, which is uh, kind of unfortunate. So yeah, um, that's the miscellaneous updates. And we have reached the questions and discussion section of uh, the meeting where I think we have about 20, 20 plus minutes or so that you know you can ask whatever question you want and uh, you have discussions or you can ask me anything. Yep. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay, anyone else? I'll wait for a bit. Okay, hey, I wanted to ask about um, will the first iteration just have the Lelantis features and maybe the second iteration on the mobile bureau wallet have the um, something like a, a back end like swap kind of like integration with simple swap kind of like how its wallet does you can switch between different coins sorry uh, i can't hear that uh, you you saying that you want some sort of swap in it uh yeah uh sorry i think i'm on a blue scoop um yeah like would there be maybe like a, a kind of like swap in between let's say Firo and bitcoin and vice versa like back in sort of like coin your edge wallet like you mean kind of like uh i don't know if you're seeing my like like this, <laughs> the coin swap thing. Oh, can can you see the 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 screenshot? Oh wait, okay, the screen's loading for me. I can see it. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I do think that we will have it. Uh, it's just like you know how decentralized we want it. Of course. If we have something like Tor Chain, you know, the problem with all these decentralized networks is like you kind of need the bootstrap liquidity, right? That means it's like we have to provide liquidity, and it's not as if we are, as the team, you know, we are trying to be decentralized. We're not like freaking rich and <laughs> have money to put everywhere, right? You would have to rely on existing users to do that, um, which is why we have been using uh, services like swap services like Swiss Chain Exchange now. Uh, to provide all this swap functionality as long as there's no KYC or logging of IP addresses. Uh, so yes, uh, I think that would definitely be something in, but we do want to make sure, we, we do want to see how it goes with the Fero client, whether people would use this coin swap features. Uh, it would actually be like if we put in like a small little fee, it can be a way for the, the dev team to earn a little bit of additional income we may not have it, we may have it, but you know, let's say we add like 0.2% or something like that. Um, may make sense. Uh, but yeah, I think it is, we can definitely have it in our mobile wallet, but right now we're just trying to get a, 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 like a version that just works uh, with Lelantis and everything like that. And that was the absolute priority. And I guess we can always add the swaps uh, at a later time. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay, yeah, yeah, that answers the question. Yeah. Uh, NFTs. <laughs> I believe someone is building a Firo NFT. Uh, yeah, I probably can't announce it yet. Uh, but yeah, someone is doing that. And I don't completely understand it <laughs> because uh, apparently there's an NFT backed with actual collateral, with actual money behind it. I'm not exactly sure uh, how it all works. Apparently, you can decompose the NFT and it gets you get all the assets. Uh, but we'll see. You know, um, uh, apparently they're like one or two weeks away from implementing it. But yeah, 
I mean, uh, NFTs are cool, but I don't want to be jumping on every single hype uh, wagon, uh, especially it's something that isn't uh, our our forte, right? Because the the very concept of an NFT is non fungible token. When Firo is all about fungibility and privacy, right? So I don't think it's something that uh, we should be like dedicating a lot of resources in but it's something like if he, if people want to build like nfts backed by you know uh, st firo or bsc firo sure go ahead i think it'd be fun yeah uh yeah i see some new guys that i've never seen in the meeting before so um yeah so let me go back to the agenda because i know some people are followed late does anyone have any other questions? And uh, I don't know. I'm actually thinking of the next meeting. Maybe we'll schedule it like, like maybe like six hours before or something like that, so we can allow the Americans to join. Because I think this is very Asian and Europe oriented, uh, and it would be good to have some uh, American participation as well uh, from time to time. Uh, the other thing that we're actually working on is uh, localization of our website. We do actually have a very uh, strong uh, Chinese community. Uh, Kuro has been you know, amazing in, at helping manage all our groups like that and also has been helping to do our translations. Uh, if you are from a community that you feel that is underserved in terms of translations, let us know. But you know, one of the issues is that whenever we do the translation, that means we have to maintain it as well. Uh, so it has to be um, that has to be noted because you know we can't be translating every single blog post to like six or seven different languages. Um, yeah. But if you feel like you have a significant amount of like you know uh, people who don't understand English and would benefit from a translation. Uh, let us know. Uh, we'll see what we can do about it. Japanese one? Yeah. I don't know. Ha has the Japanese community... Oh, cool. Okay. The Japanese Telegram community has been quite active. Is it still called Zcoin Japan or has it re renamed? <laughs> All right. Cool. Let's see. All right. Um. Well, I guess there isn't any... Big questions. I hope everyone is satisfied with the update. Um, there's another thing that we are also seriously thinking about, which is, you know, once we've laid down the lanterns and all of that, how are we going to deal with uh, governance? Um, and right now, like you know, uh, the current thought process that I'm having is, sure, you know, having notes uh, is cool uh and like you know you're saying that how should we do voting as we mentioned many times before we are not big fans of master note voting because it tends to be just wells dictating who should do what and often um not necessarily the people who hold the most coins have the best knowledge of the project it may just be like wells with a lot of money who just want to invest in something right and we have also seen time and time again uh that when whales vote often it is uh for the benefit of themselves rather than the project and we have seen that in eos and many other projects uh, that have implemented some sort of uh governance with like a minimum amount so what if we do want to go down this sort of like coin voting governance, uh, you know, one way to kind of approach it is to have coins kind of locked. Like, you know, yeah, once you vote with it, it is locked for a certain amount of time uh, so that you can't use it. Uh, so that means there is a cost to voting. So if you are well and you want to exercise your voting power, it means that you can't use those coins again to vote for a certain period of time. And also, it means you can't sell it as well. I think that may be a good way to kind of balance things out. That means you are willing to invest in the long term of Firo by locking your coins uh, rather than just like, you know, I have coin, I can vote, and I can buy coins and vote. And that's also a problem when exchanges can vote as well. Okay. Uh, Yemoja, uh, yeah. You were saying. 
Did you get pushback from? Yeah, I think most people aren't very happy about <laughs> burning coins. I personally think it's a great idea, but maybe I think people don't like the idea of destroying their own coins to vote. Um, but I think locking may be a lot more um, acceptable because you don't lose it. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know. Um, yeah, I'm actually really thinking about the max Sphero, like, you know, whether we should really just go back to 21 million. I mean, we have to think about, are we trying to be private digital gold? Or are we trying to be a private digital currency, right? And if it's a private digital currency, then, you know, stuff like a tail emission actually makes sense. Um, it does mean infinite supply, but if that's only technical, that it's not really infinite as the way people think it is. Uh, so I do think that a tail and supply would continue to secure, like you will always have some miners uh, mining your coin. There will always be ways to get your coins. And I don't know, I'm in favor of that, but I think that may have to come there's a much bigger discussion, right? Uh, whether the community will be behind that. But yeah. Okay. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, I think uh, I'll be closing off the meeting here. Uh, I'll wait for a couple more seconds. If anyone just wants to say something or ask anything, we are always here. Uh, you will have noticed that I am not as active in the chat as I used to be. I think it's. Uh, a lot better this way and uh you know i'm always accessible like you want to talk on the forums i'm there uh or uh you know at this community meetings uh, it's just a matter of uh prioritization and not being uh spending all day looking at, at chats so yeah all right thanks for coming guys and i guess that's the end of this meeting this will be posted on 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 our youtube and other stuff uh and we will you know you want to discuss this please feel free to drop by our forums and we'll be happy to chat over there all right thanks guys